for coverage you can count on. It's the KFOX 14 Morning News. Good morning, I'm Stephanie Guadian. We are following this developing story out of Aurora, Colorado, the scene of a mass shooting taking place at a movie theater there. Yeah, as many as uh, 12 people, maybe up to 15 dead in this shooting. It happened just after midnight inside of a uh, showing of the new Batman movie. Uh, details on this story just still coming in. We've been following it for you all throughout the morning. Stephanie and I putting it out there on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, Twitter. We, it's just going to continue to develop all throughout the day. We're going to have an update coming up for you again, try to hopefully take you back live to the scene in just a few minutes. Right now, they want to talk weather. Let's head over to Brad Montgomery in the Weather Center. Hey, good morning, guys. Let's talk about your Friday and your weekend forecast. Live look outside 73 global hospice right now. Not as hot for today. K Fox early warning storm track Doppler is dry. Things starting to warm up 70 in Las Cruces, 71 for us in El Paso. Now for today, 91 degrees for a high temperature. Yesterday we had a 92, so again, not as hot once again. 20% chance of a thunderstorm. Lows in the lower 70s for you in Las Cruces, upper 80s, around 89 degrees, 20% chance of a thunderstorm. But for the weekend, we're going to be getting drier and hotter. Those details coming up. And it is 7 o'clock. Let's head outside and help you beat the traffic on this Friday morning. So far, things looking good. We're taking you out to El Paso's east side. You can see a lot of green on your screen. That, of course, good news because green means go. No accidents or delays to slow you down if you're heading in that direction this morning. Buckle up, be safe, be nice to your fellow drivers. Coming up in 10 minutes, we're going to take you out to El Paso's west side. Now we want to get back to that developing story coming out of Colorado this morning. That is where a gunman opened fire inside of a theater during a premiere of the new Batman movie. Perhaps 12, maybe even 15 people killed. Yeah, here's a live view over the parking lot of that movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. That white car belongs to the gunman. His name is James Holmes. He is 24 years old, lives there in Aurora, Colorado. He has no known ties to any foreign or domestic terrorist groups. Uh, we do know that there's a bomb squad on the scene of his apartment building as well. They're searching for an explosive device. Witnesses inside of that movie theater say that he may have been wearing a bulletproof vest at the time of that shooting. It happened just after 1230 during that uh, midnight showing of the new Batman movie. Uh, apparently, they say the bullets started flying. At the same point, there was a shooting scene in the movie. So at first, some people in the theater having trouble discerning whether or not it was happening in real life. Yeah, at least 10 people actually dying there inside of the movie theater. The other victims dying at nearby hospitals. Some of the victims were told as young as six nine years old. Of course, a lot of kids were inside that movie theater because this is a big family movie. A lot of families were there to enjoy the show. No one ever imagining that something like this could happen certainly at a movie theater. Yeah, this is uh, certainly going to be raising a lot of concerns, obviously, at theaters all across the weekend and what is supposed to be a major box office weekend. Uh, we have, uh, of course, Still new, so much new information that is coming in at, uh, at this point. We know that one of the victims, one of the women who died in this shooting, is originally from San Antonio, had just relocated to Denver. Uh, she was sending out tweets uh, while waiting in that theater. I've gone ahead, if you go on to the KFOX 14 Facebook page, uh, I've gone ahead and posted a, a link where you can see those tweets that were being sent out literally just minutes before she died. Yeah, certainly a lot of people inside that movie theater when this shooting happened. Uh, as many as 100 eyewitnesses being bussed over to a nearby high school. That is where they're going to be questioned and talked to by investigators. We're going to keep a close eye on this story and bring you new developments as they come into our newsroom. Coming up in the next half hour, you're going to hear from some of the people inside that theater when the shots ring out. In other news, 703, a new fire station could finally open its doors soon. El Paso getting ready to make some repairs on an arroyo that has so far kept the doors closed for months now. KFOX 14 morning news reporter Candlelight Flores now joining us live this morning on the west side of El Paso. Candle Fire Station 31 here off of Mesa Park Drive was complete since December. Right now you can see it's still get it up and obviously sitting here quiet and empty. It's because of this eroding arroyo right here next to it that it hasn't opened yet. 
problem happened between 2006 and 2008 when the flooding caused a lot of erosion in Arroyo that, that abuts the fire station. Mm -hmm. And it cut some of the property away from the fire station. So when we started construction on the station, we realized we're going to have to do some repair work in that Arroyo. Schubert, the city engineer in charge of this project, says a couple of months after they started construction of Fire Station 31, which was last May, they ran into problems with the Arroyo. But it was too late to stop construction because the federal funds to build the station had an expiration date. And within that time, there was just not enough time to actually look for another property and start over. That property was acquired so long ago, I don't know, it was well before my time with the city. And it was always planned to have a fire station there. Now the backfill project to actually fix this arroyo is going to start next week and they expect that it will last about a month before they can complete those repairs. Coming up, I'll tell you how much it's going to cost and why this will not be the only work that's going to be done here. Reporting in West El Paso, Candlelight Flores, KFOX for the KFOX 14 Morning News. And the El Paso Fire Department saying that delay has not affected them because this particular fire station was not created out of need, but simply to help improve coverage on the west side. Fire Station 31 should be open by this October. It's now 704. El Paso's tax assessor and collector allegedly mismanaging more than a million dollars. El Paso police now have this case. A tip about this coming to the city's auditor by an employee. Former city tax assessor collector Juan Sandoval in charge of that operation. The auditor saying no money was stolen. It was simply taken from the wrong account. In the end, it means less money going back to the city because the tax office budget looks lower than it really is. It was in the case of anybody made out more than what they should have. It was an issue of how the expenses were paid. The auditor saying the former tax collector was not benefiting financially. However, as we mentioned, police are still handling this case. El Paso police arresting a man for having meth and a shotgun. 32-year-old Manuel Moreno was arrested on Wednesday at the Lone Star Inn on Montana. Moreno was reportedly carrying a 12-gauge shotgun and a half gram of meth. Well, two Texas elementary school students under arrest this morning after they supposedly set up a Facebook page in another girl's name to bully her. Parents say their 12-year-old daughter, well, she got a text last month from a friend asking why that girl was saying nasty things about her on Facebook. The Hood County Sheriff says two girls allegedly set up a fictitious Facebook page with the victim's name. Then they used it to say vulgar things to other kids and even pick fights with those victim's friends. It's just like um, stealing somebody's identity that was brought up before. And instead of using it for fi financial gain, they're using it for, to hurt people. Of the two girls, a 12 and 13 year old, they were arrested and charged with online impersonation. That, by the way, is a third degree felony. Time now 706, a Fort Bliss soldier dying while he is in jail. KFOX 14 speaking exclusively with his family about what may have happened in the moments leading up to his death. And a live look outside. Nice morning out there for morning light breeze out there 73 global hospice not as hot for your friday but some changes for the weekend we'll talk about it in kfox 14 morning news its coverage you can count on welcome back 10 minutes after seven on your friday morning we are going to help you beat the traffic this morning heading out to el paso's west side where things are looking good the sun is up shining bright and we don't have any problems on the borderlands roadways to tell you about this morning. That's good news. Hopefully it's going to stay that way. So just buckle up and be safe as you head out. Coming up in 10 minutes, we're going to take you to Las Cruces. I did say it's Friday. And that means the weekend just around the corner. Brad, how's it going to be? Boy, it's going to be a dry one, but a warm one. Not bad out there this morning. 73 Global Hospice, KFOX Early Warning Storm Track Doppler. 710 is your time. We had a little shower about 70 miles down to our south. That has since dissipated. Wasn't really headed our way. That was the only game in town. Nothing showing up out there right now. Temperatures very, very nice. 70 in Las Cruces and Alamogordo, as well as TRC. 71 at the airport for us here in El Paso. 69 degrees out there in Deming. Dew points into the 50s. We're seeing a lot of mid-50 dew points for southern New Mexico. Far west Texas dew points in the upper 50 so still plenty of moisture out there with little disturbance passing by to our south that'll help increase our thunderstorm coverage i think we'll see a few more than we had yesterday winds generally out of the south and southeast that is generally the case this time of year that's our monsoonal moisture flow this is at the lower levels this is down where we are about 5 to 15 miles per hour so no problems with wind for today 
but that disturbance bringing a slightly better chance for showers and storms for Friday, but we begin to see some changes already for your Saturday on into the rest of your weekend. 91 for today, 20% chance of showers and storms, not anticipating anything severe for our Saturday, drying things out 95 degrees, just partly cloudy skies for you in Las Cruces, upper 80s for today, not too bad temperature wise for a July day, 20% chance of a storm getting hotter here too. 93 for your Saturday. 10 minutes from now, we're going to talk about the rest of your weekend. Alrighty, Brad, 7-Eleven now direct TV and Viacom resolving a big fee dispute. Why customers weren't able to watch certain popular Viacom channels. Yeah, and it's taken one for the team with these local firefighters willing to sacrifice so they can be better prepared when you have an emergency. That's next on the KFOX 14 Morning News. 712. back with more coverage you can count on. Now is 714. We want to take you back out to Aurora, Colorado this morning. That is the scene of that mass shooting that happened during a midnight showing of Batman at a movie theater there. Yeah, there's just a tremendous amount of new information. I'm keeping you updated on our Facebook page. Uh, we know the shooter. His name is James Holmes. He is 24 years old. He is under arrest this morning. This is a live view above his apartment complex. He told authorities at the time he was taken into custody. There was a bomb inside. Apparently that is true. We've been seeing bomb squads outside of the apartment for uh, quite some time, all throughout the morning. Uh, at last word, 12 people are dead, 50 injured. And Stephanie, you said that one of the victims? Yeah, we just got news into the newsroom. Very sad news. One of the victims as young as three months uh, old. A lot of children were mm -hmm. in that movie theater. They were there with their families to watch this big premiere of the Batman movie. Back to the apartment complex. The people who live there, they've been evacuated uh, for safety reasons. FBI agents and police, they used a hook and ladder fire truck to reach uh, this apartment window where the suspect lived. They then put a camera on the end of a 12 foot pole inside of that apartment so they could see what was happening. Uh, we do know that one investigator there actually broke the window of the third floor apartment where the 24 year old suspect James Holmes lives again. He didn't offer any resist when he was taken into custody. Police say that uh, they t he told them that he had an explosive in his car and he had more explosives inside of this apartment building. And now we are hearing uh, the first statement from the mother of James Holmes. She uh, talking to federal authorities saying very quickly, you have the right person. I need to call police. I need to fly to Colorado. Mm. Wow. And, and really just a lot of questions about this story because uh, this James Holmes, he does not have, investigators say, a long criminal history. And so far, he's not being tied to any terrorist groups. Right now, this morning, it is believed that he acted alone. Yeah, they are describing this as a lone wolf incident. There are a lot of concerns uh, this weekend because this is such mm -hmm. a big movie premiere that there may be copycat instances of this uh, crime. Uh, you know, for a long time, Steph, there have been uh, people with um, the Department of Homeland Security saying they've worried about these so-called soft targets, mm -hmm. movie theaters in the past being mentioned. And I think this is an instance where uh, we see really how vulnerable we can be when we're out in a public venue. I, I also want to add really quickly that uh, we have identified one of the victims. She is a woman from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. She had just relocated to uh, Denver, Colorado. She was working for a uh, sports website. Her ultimate goal is to become a sportscaster. She had interned with our Fox sister station in Denver for a very brief period of time. Her name, uh, Jessica Redfield, uh, she had been sending tweets from inside of the movie theater right mm -hmm. before the showing of that movie. Also another report of a Houston woman surviving this shooting. Now, some of the survivors who were inside that movie theater when the shooting happened, at least a one person pulled out their cell phone and started mm -hmm. taping what was happening inside that theater. We have that video. We're going to be showing it to you coming up a little later in this news task. You're also going to hear from some eyewitnesses who were inside. Yeah, we're going to have continuing coverage for you on this story. And now to a story back here in the borderland that you're only going to be seeing on KFOX 14. A Fort Bliss soldier dies while he is in jail. His family says he was only supposed to be there for five days. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office saying that on July 13th, this man, 26 year old Sergeant James Brown, turned himself in to serve time for a DWI sentence. The El Paso County Jail records have him checking in at 8 o'clock last Friday night. Now officials say at some point while in custody, he needed to receive some medical treatment. 
He was then taken to University Medical Center where he died. KFOX 14 speaking to Brown's mother and wife about what happened. They said he was combative and they gave him some medication and uh, he started having problems breathing. They administered the injections at 12.15 within 45 minutes. My son's body was shutting down. His body completely shut down. He was bleeding out the ears, the nose, the mouth. His kidneys shut down. His blood pressure dropped to a very dangerous level uh, and his liver shut down. So whatever they gave him poisoned his body. It poisoned the system and that's not something that an anti-anxiety drug is going to do to you. That man is the family's attorney, his wife Rachel there on the right, and mothers say they never knew Brown to ever be combative. He had served two tours of duty in Iraq. He had been prescribed some sleeping pills, but his family says he didn't take them, and he led a very healthy life. Sergeant Brown's death remains under investigation by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, as well as the District Attorney's Office, neither of which were willing to speak to KFOX 14. We're also working to get a comment from the Texas Commission on Jail Standards. Now from our exclusive Las Cruces Bureau, the town of Mesilla finally getting a new fire truck. During Thursday's budget meeting, Mayor Nora Barraza telling KFOX 14 firefighters were voluntarily giving up their yearly stipends used for training. That money instead going to go, go to that new truck. The mayor says this kind of action shows the town has one of the best fire departments in the state. They just are like a big family out there and from the actions today and the comments today, you can see uh, where their heart is, and we here at the town of Missy are very grateful to them. Barasa says they hope to get a loan to pay for the truck, which will look like this one. 720, we want to help you beat the traffic this morning. We are going to take you to Las Cruces, where you can see things looking good this morning. Traffic moving along just fine there in the City of the Crosses. Of course, there's a lot of construction all over the city. Keep that in mind if your commute is going to be taking you in that direction this morning. Other than that, the commute from Las Cruces to El Paso looking good and vice versa. Brad, I've got our fingers crossed this morning that the weekend is going to be looking as good. Yep. Weekend will. We're not anticipating any increase in rain chances. In fact, a decrease. 76 Bravo Chevrolet Cadillac KFOX early warning storm track Doppler. Talking about below average temperatures for today. Actually a high this afternoon around 91 degrees. Average around 94. 70 currently in Las Cruces. 71 currently at the airport in El Paso. Notice a little swirl there. A little upper level low working its way toward the west northwest. We're going to be on the north side of that system. It could actually increase our thunderstorm coverage a little bit this afternoon. A little bit more than we had yesterday. The storms will be moving rather rapidly, so don't anticipate any kind of flood threat or anything like that. As that heads off toward the west, it'll be pulling the moisture along toward the west with it for our Saturday and for our Sunday. And with high pressure building in from the Midwest all the way through the desert southwest, we're going to see hotter temperatures both days, while the best chances for showers for your Saturday and Sunday remain over into Arizona. Five day forecast with your weekend always in view. Not as hot for today. 91, 20% chance of a storm, but look at your weekend. Again, if you have outdoor plans, 95, no chance for rain, just partly cloudy for your Saturday, 97, Partly cloudy for our Sunday. The rain chances returning Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday of next week with highs still into the mid 90s for you in Las Cruces. Not as hot for today. 89 degrees, 20% chance of a storm for your Saturday. Partly cloudy, 93, 96 for our Sunday. So a hotter, drier weekend once again this weekend. And then here too, the rain chances returning middle part of next week. All righty, Brad, 722 now. The El Paso streetcar project passes, but there's now a new debate brewing this morning. Yeah, but first, pregnant women drinking new numbers show just how many women admit they're having those drinks and even how many say they go on binges. That's next on KFOX 14 Morning News. Time right now, 722. Back with more coverage you can count on. Welcome back, 725 in your Health Watch this morning. Well, according to the CDC, one in 13 pregnant women are drinking alcohol. Researchers say that is the highest rate of alcohol use among pregnant women, and it occurs in uh, women between the ages of 35 and 44 the most. Researchers also discovered nearly 1.5% of pregnant women reported binge drinking about three times a month. Let's get to your consumer watch this morning as Viacom and Direct TV finally settling a fee, a fee dispute. 17 Viacom channels, including MTV, had not been accessible to more than 20 million Direct TV customers since July 10th. The two companies arguing back and forth over how much Direct TV should pay to carry those channels. Terms of the deal announced have not yet been released.
Well, Trayvon Martin's parents taking to the airwaves. They're responding to George Zimmerman's first TV interview. Yeah, what they are now saying and why the plug is being pulled on a second interview with Zimmerman. Our station 31 has been complete for months now, but it can't open it because of it eroding arroyo right next to it. The project finally in the works to get it fixed and how much it'll cost is coming up next on the KFOX 14 Morning News. It's coverage you can count on. Live look outside, 76 degrees, Bravo Chevrolet Cadillac, northwest winds at 10, KFOX, early warning storm track Doppler, 7.30 is your time, the winds are fairly light. On the west side, we have a nice little breeze because of the winds coming over the Franklin Mountains or those southeasterly winds, but calm at the airport, 5 mile per hour winds for you at the Las Cruces airport, 7 mile per hour winds in Deming, 70 right now in Las Cruces, 71 in El Paso, a little bit of moisture out there, feels pretty good, 72 in Alamogordo, 69 degrees for you in Deming, not as hot for this afternoon, for your lunch hour, about 84 degrees, 91 by 3 p.m., we will have that 20% chance of an evening thunderstorm by the late afternoon and evening hours. Southeast winds 5 to 15. For you in Las Cruces, not as hot at least for today. 82 by noon, 89 degrees by 3 p.m. 20% chance of a storm. We're going to talk about the hotter temperatures coming up for the weekend in 10 minutes. 7.30, quick check of your traffic this morning shows what appears to be a relatively easy commute. Take a look if you're jumping on I-10 on the west side of El Paso. Going to make your way toward Las Cruces. Going to take you about half an hour. Once in the city, the cross is things moving just fine on US-70 out toward White Sands. And if you are getting on I-10 in West El Paso, heading toward downtown, things moving along just fine. We do expect there to be a few delays uh, as rush hour continues to increase. For right now, though, you're smooth sailing. We'll have another update of your traffic coming up in 10 minutes when we take you to Northeast El Paso. Right now, though, we want to take you back to the developing story we've been following all morning long for you. A mass shooting happening inside of a movie theater at the Batman premiere that's happening in Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, Aurora is a suburb of Denver at last report. Look at this. Here's video of one of the victims leaving. Look at this guy in the black and white shirt. Look at that. Do you see the blood on the back of him? Witnesses mm. inside describe blood as being absolutely everywhere. 12 people known dead, 50 in the hospital. Some of the shooting victims as young as three months old. I want to stop for a second. This is real quick, a live view outside of the theater just after midnight when that shooting occurred. Right now, I want to uh, go to a soundbite we have from someone who was inside at the time. As they were leaving, he witnessed a baby, an infant, get shot. But yeah, they said gas bombs um, as they were leaving and then just gunshots all over the place. And it started in the theater that I had bought tickets to. So it was, it was kind of a mind blower. While I was here waiting to talk to the doctor, I, I heard the call come in at the nurse's station. From what I could see, there are people unconscious, people bleeding. I. And we're also hearing from mm. other people who were inside that movie theater when the shooting uh, happened. One of the women who managed to escape says that the shooting suspect pointed a gun right at her face, but then ended up shooting people who were actually seated behind her. She says she was sitting in the second row of just about four feet from the gunman. And uh, so the bullet casings, they were falling down on mm. her head, burning her forehead. Uh, the gunman, she says, only stopping to reload. And let's talk about that gunman. He is in police custody. This is a view above his car. Police searching it for a bomb. They also were searching his apartment, which is very close to that theater, looking for a bomb. The guy's name is James Holmes. He is 24 years old. The FBI running a background check on him. He shows no known ties to any kind of terrorist group, whether it be foreign or domestic. Uh, they are describing this as a, quote, lone wolf incident. A big concern this weekend is going to be possible copycat incidents, even copycat threats uh, taking place since, because this Batman movie is such a huge premiere, theaters all across the country expected to be packed. Yeah, again, the big worry now is copycat mm. killings over the weekend. And the big question this morning is a motive. We still don't know what prompted this 24-year-old man to open fire on that crowd. We're going to continue to follow the story, bring you any more updates as they come into our newsroom. Right here, back in the borderland, it's a couple months since it should have been opened, but Fire Station 31 in West El Paso is still closed. That's right. The city says it's all because of some problems with an arroyo located behind that station. KFOX 14 Morning News reporter Candelay Flores finding out the plans they have to fix it. 
Fire Station 31 here off of Mesa Park Drive has been sitting here empty since December. And again, it's because of an eroding arroyo right here next to it. But finally, starting next week, crews are going to be out here fixing it so they can finally open the station soon. So this is going to be kind of a, not a temporary solution, but a partial solution that will just get the fire station fixed. There's actually a larger, longer term plan that's budgeted through the stormwater utility that's going to be done as part of the development of that property that's now privately owned that was owned by ASARCO. Now, crews broke ground on Fire Station 31 last May, but couldn't stop construction once they ran into problems with the Arroyo, and it's because of federal funds that had an expiration date. There was no time to pick another property and start over, so instead they chose to make repairs to the Arroyo. The backfill project to do that will cost an estimated $500,000. The cost is going to be covered for the most part by the stormwater utility because it's a stormwater project. Mm -hmm. The city is going to put some funds in it, the part that's relative to our fire station and, and the driveway, so it's a, it's a shared project. Now those repairs are going to get started here next week and are expected to take about a month to complete. The El Paso Stormwater Utility is also setting aside $4 million to go ahead and work on that future work for the long-term repairs. We don't know exactly when that work's going to start, but we do know that they do expect to open Fire Station 31 here by October. Reporting live in West El Paso, Candlelight Flores, the KFOX 14 Morning News. 736, the streetcar project in El Paso has now passed, but there is a new debate emerging this morning. Should the city restore the old historic cars or should they go buy new ones? Well, these are pictures of the historic cars that used to roll in the streets of El Paso. Paso del Norte streetcar preservation group saving nine of them. They may not look like much, but the group says they waited 40 years to see these cars get back on track, literally. But the city says their research shows buying replica cars would be a lot more cost effective. Streetcar experts disagree. They're very successful designs. They're running daily. They're, they're efficient. They're cheap. And the, some of the new replicas are not proven designs yet. El Paso streetcars, turns out, are so rare and unique that other major cities have been lining up to take them. In fact, there is one model that is the only one of its kind in the entire world. Well, despite a state law banning racial profiling, a new report is claiming mass violations by law enforcement agencies in New Mexico. That survey being released by the state's NAACP and an immigrant advocacy group. The report says less than a quarter of agencies surveyed are in compliance with the 2009 state law banning bias policing. Only the Socorro County Sheriff's Department, Socorro and Santa Fe Police were reportedly in full compliance. 737, a manhunt Monday, most wanted fugitive, turns himself into authorities. KFOX 14 first telling you about this man, Gabriel Guterres, on Monday. El Paso Sheriff deputies were looking for Gabriel for violating his parole. This stems from a 2005 aggravated sexual assault involving a child. 737 this morning, a horrific crime, a pregnant woman brutally murdered. Her ex now under arrest. Yeah, the past problems her family believes may have led up to this tragedy and, of course, continuing coverage for you of the Colorado movie theater shooting. And a live look outside, not as hot for your Friday, so some good news there, but the temperatures will be heating up for the weekend. 76 right now, Bravo Chevrolet Cadillac. want to tell you just how hot. If you Fox 14 morning news, it's coverage, you can come. Seven forty. Let's beat the traffic in Northeast El Paso this morning. Take a look. See, you can see things that stop and go there on Woodrow Bean before you make your way to the fifty four interchange. Unfortunately, that has just become an all too standard part of life. Talking to a friend of mine who drives through there, and she said it is a headache on a daily basis. Uh, once you get on to 54 though, things moving along pretty good. Do have one traffic alert I want to tell you about this morning. The southbound shoulder on US 54 between the Diana exit ramp and the Trans Mountain entrance ramp, which is right there in that area, going to be closed throughout the weekend, but that's not going to happen until 9 this morning. It will remain closed until 4, so rush hour shouldn't be affected. Just drive safe, buckle up, be nice to the other drivers. We're going to take one final check of your traffic in 10 minutes.
All right, let's take a look at the KFOX Interactive Radar. I'm reloading it here. We're actually showing quiet conditions for southern New Mexico and far west Texas. A few very light showers as you zoom in in and around the boot heel of New Mexico and off to the south in and over actually Sonora, Mexico, just over the Chihuahua line. You can see it's moving slowly, ever so slowly off toward the west when you press the play button. That comes in handy. You can see if it's headed toward where you live. Go to KFOXTV.com. If you ever see showers and storms in the region, use the radar. It's free. Also follow us on Twitter as well. We're at KFOX Weather Team. It's 742 terror in the skies as a plane fills up with smoke, the entire ordeal caught on tape. The fear one couple had not only aboard that plane, but then once the plane made its way to the ground and a public peer, a whole bunch of them in fact, caught in the act. It really gets disgusting and, and it smells, the smell is atrocious. Hey, uh, how the owners of the building where these guys are peeing have now exacted their revenge. That's next on the KFOX 14 Morning News. Welcome back. It is 745. We're continuing to develop to follow the development story coming out of Aurora, Colorado, near Denver this morning. That is where a gunman opened fire inside of a movie theater. This happening during a midnight showing of the new Batman movie. At last report, 12 people, people are dead. 50 others are hurt. Uh, let's see if we have some video taken. This is cell phone video taken. Look at this guy in the black striped shirt. Now look as he walks past. He's covered in blood. Apparently witnesses saying there was blood all over the inside of the theater. Now, the shooter is a 24-year-old man. His name is James Holmes. He is in police custody. This video taken above the movie theater, again, right outside of Denver, Colorado, just after the shooting. That happened at about 12.30, our time. A uh, lot of conflicting reports coming in about victims in this case. The Associated Press reporting one of those victims may be as young as three months old. Yeah, at least 10 people dying inside of that movie theater. The others who died did so at nearby hospital. Dozens of people injured. We're going to be learning more details about them as the morning continues. You know what, and Steph, our producer is telling me that uh, it's just been announced there was supposed to be a, a major movie premiere uh, going on tonight that is now mm -hmm. going to be canceled out of respect uh, for the victims of this shooting. In fact, as you mentioned earlier, there are some people that are now calling it the Batman Massacre because yeah. it did happen during the premiere of what is supposed to be one of the biggest blockbuster movies probably the entire year. Yeah, a lot of kids were with their mm -hmm. parents inside that theater when this shooting happened. Now, the mother of the suspect who did not put up a fight when he was taken into custody by police, James Holmes, his mother telling investigators that they do indeed have the right person and that she is now on her way to Colorado. We are going to keep you updated on this story. In other news, 747, Trayvon Martin's parents going in front of the camera, responding to an interview done the day before with their son's admitted killer, George Zimmerman. My first thought was that I wish that Trayvon was here to tell his side of the story. Zimmerman appearing Wednesday on Fox News Channel. He says the death of Martin was, quote, God's plan. I think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, God did not have a plan for Trayvon to, to die and for George Zimmerman to shoot Trayvon for no reason. I just would like to know um, why did he even get out the car? Why was my son so suspicious? What made him uh, rush to judge my son and, and thinking that he was uh, a criminal uh, or pursuing some the, a burglary? Zimmerman, meanwhile, has his website once again up and running. He's also has uh, he bailed on a planned interview on The View. This after the show's producers reportedly wouldn't provide Zimmerman's wife with a place to live for a month. A store owner in Allentown, Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia, getting revenge on people who have been peeing on the outside wall behind his store. Check it out. He's now rigged up a camera and look, a shower head in the back alley. A motion detector on that security camera letting him know when someone goes back there to go to the bathroom. Well, there's the pipe disguised, or there's the shower disguised as a pipe. He just flicks a switch, and all of a sudden, the shower comes down from the wall. It really gets disgusting, and, and it smells, the smell is atrocious. Usually they're upset, sometimes they laugh. <laughs> Usually they're too intoxicated to even realize what's happening, I think. For three months now, potty vigilantes have been catching and recording dozens of people, not just men, but women and kids too, not only going just number one, but yes, going number two as well.
morning to a dramatic rescue plane out in northern Colombia. Rescue crews. Yeah, sorry, Steph. Uh, rescue crews finding a three year old missing for an entire day inside of a sewer line. Take a look at the video. You can see the young boy desperately holding on to this giant stick so the water doesn't sweep him away. Look at this. A rescue worker then jumping into the sewer, grabbing hold of that child and hoisting him up to safety. The first search of the sewer is turning up nothing, but emergency crews thankfully deciding to just go back and take a second look. There he is being lifted to safety. Everybody applauding. Apparently, the little boy had been playing in the construction zone with his brothers when he disappeared. One final traffic update for you as we take you to the far east side of El Paso. Take a look. This is where the loop meets the interstate. Things going just fine this morning. No accidents or delays at this point to slow you down. Uh, we are expecting there to be some construction along the border highway closer to downtown. That's going to be in the area between Park and Campbell, but that's just a shoulder. But heads up, I know that's enough to should slow down just a little bit. Otherwise, just buckle up and be safe. Look for a little bit of slowdown as you get near the Tinseltown area. Otherwise, uh, you're good to go. We're here keeping you updated with traffic. Remember, every 10 minutes all throughout the morning. All right, let's take a look at some temperatures on this Friday morning. 72 in Las Cruces, 71 for us in the El Paso area. Really nice morning out there this morning. 73 for you in Alamogordo. Your evaporative cooler is working again in the mid-range. We still have plenty of low-level moisture out there, but good news for today. Temperatures not as hot. 91 degrees for high temperature as a weak disturbance passes by to our south. That will also give us a 20% chance of an evening thunderstorm. I think we'll see a few more storms than we had around the region yesterday. We go hotter and drier just in time for your weekend. 95 for our Saturday. Average around 90 four degrees so by tomorrow already back above average 97 partly cloudy for our Sunday still remaining dry so another dry weekend like last weekend 96 for our Monday partly cloudy skies rain chances returning but temperatures still remaining warm into the mid 90s rain chances returning especially by the middle part of next week as far as the bottom line for today 20 percent chance of a thunderstorm we're going to see partly cloudy skies not as hot for today but a hotter weekend is on the way Alrighty, Brad, 751, a pregnant woman tied up and then set on fire this morning. Her former boyfriend is under arrest. This crime happening in Phoenix. Neighbors of that victim, Shaniqua Hall, horrified to learn exactly how she died. I don't understand how we could be that close to someone while they're dying and being burned. It's like, yeah, she lived right above us. So it was, you know, saw her the night before as I was finishing walking up my dogs. You know, she's a really nice lady. But it was unfortunate. Well, the, this man who is under arrest is also the father of that unborn baby. He is still denying that he was ever involved in this murder. Police say, though, they have evidence that proves otherwise. Family members of the victim say the two had a long history of problems, and most of them centered on finances. A high school principal under arrest in Arkansas after being caught allegedly choking a woman. Police say that Christopher Webb was naked and bloody. They also say that uh, he may have killed the woman's dog. He's being held on a bunch of charges this morning. His bond set at $5,000. His exact relationship to the victim and a possible motive, that isn't being made public. A big lawsuit this morning in Tennessee involving people who work at this prison and their paychecks. 240 workers saying they didn't get the pay they should have. Now that suit claims that the workers are paid for eight and a half hours a day, but they're made to stay as much as an hour longer until all prisoners are accounted for. The local sheriff's office, which runs this prison, was not responding publicly to that lawsuit. Smoke in the cockpit of an American Eagle flight forcing an emergency landing. Passengers recording everything on their cell phones. I'm definitely going to reevaluate my life insurance and, and will. <laughs> no joke. Chris and Melinda Pyle taking this video you see here inside of that plane. Some scary moments, not only in the air, but also when they finally touched down in Chicago. Smoke started coming down from the ceiling, and then we got freaked out. It was just an intense um, burning of, you know, my eyes, my throat. We are standing on the wing of the plane, and it's far down to the ground. Is there a ladder? Is there a chute? Nothing. There was nothing and there was no instruction really. So I just sat down and slid off the wing and turned around and, and caught my wife. Yeah, fortunately the passengers, they were not seriously hurt. American not saying this morning anything publicly about the incident. It also isn't clear to what caused all that smoke. 754, two bombs going off on the side of an interstate in North Carolina. Check this out, the bomb squad coming in. There you see one of them being detonated. They were discovered inside of a wanted fugitive's car. 
police chasing down the guy. He was wanted on an outstanding warrant. There you see one of the machines going in to get that bomb. They were chasing him. The car suffering a blowout. That's when officers were able to move in. They arrested that guy, and then they discovered those bombs. That man now going to be facing very serious charges because of these explosives. And a roller coaster coming to a halt mid-ride. Look at this. It happened at St. Louis in, uh, in St. Louis at the Six Flags Amusement Park. Local fire department having to come in. Get those riders off the thing. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, although I can't imagine they're going to be going up on a roller coaster anytime soon. Still not clear why it came to a halt. Time now is 7.54, and we want to take another look at our top story. This has been a breaking, developing story all morning long, and we've been covering it for you. We're talking about that mass shooting that happened in Aurora, Colorado, at a midnight showing of a Batman movie. Take a look at this video. Yeah, here you see one of the... Uh perceived victims, I imagine, leaving the theater. At last word, 12 people are dead. 50 others are in the hospital. There are all different age ranges involved. Some of the victims may be as young as three months old. The suspect in this case, his name is James Holmes. He is uh, in police custody this morning. They discovered him walking toward his car, this car right here at the back of the parking lot. At that point, he informed officers that there was a bomb inside of the car and one inside of his uh, apartment as well. Yeah, the FBI heavily involved in this case right from the start, and they have looked into his history and so far have found no ties to any foreign or domestic terrorist groups. Right now, they're describing this as a case of a lone wolf, meaning that they do believe that he acted alone this morning. No reports on what may have been his motive. His mother reportedly contacting investigators, James Holmes' mother, saying that they have have the right man in custody and she is right now trying to make her way to Colorado. At this point we are learning a little bit more about some of the victims. One of them, uh, a young woman originally from San Antonio, Texas. She had just relocated to Denver. She was working for a sports blog. Uh, she was sending tweets from inside of the movie theater in the minutes leading up to the start of the film. She was killed. Uh, her friend who was with her, who's also from Texas, was also shot and at last word is in the hospital. We're also getting reports that there is a woman from Houston who was in that theater and was also shot. Witnesses saying that this man was wearing a bulletproof vest and some kind of helmet when he started firing at them. They say he literally was just picking victims at random. And Stephanie, I was thinking about this. It's such a dark movie theater. I can't imagine if he was really even able to see the faces of the people that he was shooting, or if it literally was just pointing a gun into a crowd and mm -hmm. where those bullets went, they went. Yeah, one woman was sitting in the front seat. She said she came face to face with that shooter for some unknown reason. He moved the gun, shot some people oh. behind her. Just hard to even imagine the chaos that was going on inside that movie theater. Yes, and we're going to keep you updated with this story throughout the day online at kfoxtv.com. We'll bring you more coming up at 5 and at 9. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday morning. Have a great weekend.